All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we took a little break from YouTube because guess what? There were two flus going around down here. There was the one we can't talk about on YouTube and there was another one. And I managed to get both of them, which meant I couldn't talk for about two weeks. But we're back making videos again. And guess what? It's tax season. That means you guys are looking for some new wheels. And guess what? We got a whole bunch in stock. We got Heritage, we got Work, we got SSR, we got everything you're looking for. It's on our website. Click the link down below, pick some up. Now, let's get into the video. Okay, let's go. If you look in your tires, you will find all kinds of different numbers, letters, symbols, heck, maybe even some ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. To the untrained eye, these might seem like some type of secret code, but guess what? It's not. This is the vital info that you need to match up the correct tires to your wheels. By the end of this video, you are going to know everything that you need to confidently buy tires that one, fit your wheels, and two, perform the way you want them to. Tire specs don't mean a lot by themselves. Understanding the wheels they go on adds a whole lot more context, so the two kind of fit together. Now luckily we already took a deep dive into all the important wheel specs that you should know. We're gonna drop that link down in the description below. If you haven't seen it, go watch that one first because without that one, you kind of don't really get the context. So, if you're buying tires for your truck, guess what? We got you covered too. This guide is made for both car and truck owners, and there are some differences, but there's a whole bunch shared as well. First, we're talking about the metric sizing system, the one you're typically going to find, and later, flotation, which is for trucks, basically. Metric sizing, the norm, is probably the first thing you're gonna see on a tire apart from the make and the model. It's a string of numbers that looks something like this. Two, two, five, four, five, R18. I know my hands off camera. These numbers tell you the physical dimensions of a given tire. The first number is the tire width. It's three digits long, 225 as an example. This denotes how wide the tires are. This is almost always expressed in millimeters, and if you spec its inches, you are probably dealing with what is known as flotation sizing, which we are going to talk about later in the video. In our example, a 225 tire is 225 millimeters wide or about eight inches. Now what's the perfect size for your rim? You're thinking, let's say a 255 tire and a 10 inch wide wheel, 255, 10 inches, right? Or a match made in heaven, right? Well, not according to tire manufacturers. See, most manufacturers say the ideal tire is actually one size larger than the width of the wheel. That's because our 10 inch wide wheels, guess what? Actually measure close to 11 inches if we include the bead seats. Remember on a wheel, you measure from inner to inner, not outer to outer. So for a 10 inch wide wheel, the ideal fit is actually a 265 or 275 tire, according to the manufacturers. This will give you a perfectly square sidewall, neither stretched nor ballooned. Of course, you can always play around the tire sizing a little bit to achieve a stretch or the opposite, oversized tires that look like diapers on your wheels. Stretch tires are a huge, huge topic of debate and one for a different day. Luckily, we already made a YouTube video on that, which again, linked down below. So now we got aspect ratio, and of all the numbers relating to sizing, aspect ratio definitely is the most confusing even for people who sell tires. This is the two digit number that follows the tire width, e.g. 255-40-R17. This number will dictate how tall the sidewall of your tires is. You might be saying, Jay, well, it's 40 millimeters tall. Guess what? Nope. The reason it causes so much confusion is because this number is a percentage of the width rather than an inch or millimeter measurement. In our example of a 255-40 tire, the sidewall will measure 102 millimeters as 40% of 255 is 102. So what you need to remember when comparing tires is that the sidewall will change if you go with a wider or narrower tire despite the number staying the same. A 235-40 will have a smaller sidewall than a 255-40. Besides fitment, what does sidewall do? Well, generally, a smaller sidewall will handle better, as there's less material to flex, while a larger sidewall will give a more comfortable ride. Now, tire construction. There will be a letter or two following the aspect ratio, e.g. 255-40-R17. You'll see R most of the time. All that this means is that the ply of a tire follows a radial pattern. You don't really need to pay attention to the existence of the letter R as it's pretty default on DOT compliant tires. If it reads D or B instead, you are probably looking at a tire for heavy machinery or trailers do not put it on your car. Now on performance tires, you might see ZR, which indicates a higher speed rating. This would read 255-40-ZR17. Wheel diameter. This is the two digit number that follows the tire construction. It is the wheel diameter, 
R17. If you get this run wrong, forget the rest because you will not even be able to mount the tires on your wheels. I don't see how you could get this one wrong, but there you go. Luckily, it is pretty self-explanatory. Just match the tire size to the wheel diameter. Don't overthink it. If you have 17 inch wheels, buy a tire that says R17. Now let's talk load index. Everything so far relates to sizing, but after the main string, there's normally a space followed by a few additional characters. 25540R1794W. These have nothing to do with sizing, but instead with performance. The first is a two or three digit number. This is the load index or load rated of your tire. Realistically, if you are buying tires for your sport, compact, performance, whatever car, you don't need to pay too much attention to this, but if you have an EV or a truck or something heavy, the general idea is the higher the number, the more weight the tires can hold. If you don't like math, you can look up the capacity in pounds based on this number. If you do like math, if we have a 116 load index, that translates 2,756 pounds. Multiply this by the number of tires and you have the total carrying capacity of the vehicle, 11,024 pounds in this case. Now, if there are two numbers, such as 120 slash 116, the first number, 120, is for single tires, while 116 is for a dually setup. The final character that may or may not be present is a speed rating, 25540R1794W. This one is pretty simple. Your tires are rated up to X speed. Speed rating value, max speed V up to 149, W168, Y186, and there are some other ones for even faster, but if you have a Bugatti, you probably not watching this video. Now let's talk flotation tires. No, they don't float. They're also not just built differently, they are measured differently. You can simply consider them imperial sized tires as all measurements are in inches or freedom units. Your BFG KO2s are gonna perform exactly the same whether they use metric or flotation. If you're looking for tall and wide tires, your perfect size might only be possible in flotation. Here is an example of a tire in flotation terms. 33, 1250, 15. So tire diameter, the rolling diameter, the big change from the metric system is that the tire diameter is the first number. It relates to the sidewall and the second is the width basically flip-flopped from metric. The first number is an absolute measurement in inches of the overall rolling diameter of the tire period full stop. In our example, the tire would be 33 inches tall, regardless of the other numbers. There's no percentage here. The system focuses on tire height, which makes a lot of sense for trucks. So if you hear anyone talking about 33s, 35s, there you go. Now after diameter, the next measurement is for the width, e.g. 12 and a half also an absolute measurement expressed in inches. In our example, this would be a 12 and a half inch wide tire. Again, flotation tires generally accommodate wider sizes. If you want skinnies or pizza cutters, you are more likely to find them in metric sizing. So the unwritten rules of what looks good on a truck are completely different than what looks good on a car. You should absolutely get tires that are wider than your wheels, unless you are doing like the whole, you know, wide poke American forces stretch tire thing. As an example, a nine inch wide wheel would look great with those 1250s. And those are the only differences between flotation and metric tire construction, wheel diameter, load index, and speed rating all work the same. Although on trucks, remember load rating is super important. Now, if you've made it this far, one, you're probably no fun at parties, but two, congrats, you probably know everything you need to know about tire sizing. You can confidently order tires for your show build, your daily driver, your truck, your tow rig, whatever. If you plan to use your car at the track, there are a few more numbers that you should know, or if you just want spirited performance driving on the street. You can find tread wear, traction, and temperature info in a different spot on the tire. This is called UTQG, Uniform Tire Quality Grading. Why it's not called TTT, I had no idea. These ratings give an at-a-glance idea of how well a tire performs. Tread wear, traction, and temperature ratings can be found in this order. And all of them will be spelled out in plain old English. Tread wear is the first one. This number rating tells you how hard a tire is. The lower the tread wear, the softer and stickier it is. A higher tread wear will not have as much grip, but the trade-off is it will last considerably longer. Typical values here range from about 160 all the way up to 600. So recommended for use of track, sub 200. That's for competitive track days. 200 to 300 is occasional track and street. 
3 to 400 is a weekend streetcar and 400 plus for a day week driver. Obviously, these also correlate based on your horsepower numbers, but eh, right? Traction wise, they go from C to A and up to double A. They estimate how well a tire will stop in wet conditions, C being the worst and double A being the best. Most passenger car tires these days are A rated, but if you have an R compound, keep an eye out for that. Temperature. Temperature grades also go from C to A. This is how well a tire can handle continued heat without prematurely failing or getting slippery. C is the minimum for DOT approved tires. B and A grades will often be found on high performance tires because guess what? You create friction, they heat up. Let's wrap it all up here. It's amazing how many people can rebuild an engine or transmission but are absolutely paralyzed when it comes to aspect ratio. Don't be that guy. If you paid attention to this video, you now know more about tires than like 95% of car enthusiasts. Hopefully, you also know about wheel size. But if not, no worries. We have a guide on that. We linked it down below. You kind of need to watch one with the other. So watch the wheels and then the tires. When you're ready to pick out your dream set of wheels, guess what? We uh, ostensibly, we sell wheels, right? So head on over to our website, find something for your car or your truck or your SUV. And the best part, we'll put your wheels inside your tires, mount them, balance them, and we'll ship them right to your door. Save you a trip to the tire shop. You can't fit those four wheels and tires in your Miata, right? Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, comment, subscribe. I promise I will not take another two week break unless you guys want me to take a two week break, in which case, you know, I'll go cry. I'll see you in the next one.